Welcome back. This week we're going to revisit the southbound sculpin. Um, this is an articulated sculpin with the fish skull head. Um, it's set up right here. Heavy fly, it's one for searching the bottom a lot. Um, not one of the more popular, or not one of my more um, used patterns, mainly just because of the rivers that I'm fishing here. Um, if I were to do more lakes reservoirs i would go to this one a lot to where i want to really search some depth or if i'm out on the blackfoot there are places if anyone's ever fished out there there are some really deep pools and everything if i want to search some deep pools do a lot of heavy aggressive jigging action this is one that i will go with here um, as far as like the more shallow water not necessarily something that i would throw a lot if i do i scale it down and i go with the small to cut the weight down some so I can still get the jig but it's not so heavy to throw to where I'm dragging bottom constantly um, and more than likely I would use a single on this one with the smaller head but I mean I've scaled a couple of them down they work pretty well but this one for searching the depths in, in bigger water this is a phenomenal pattern so we're going to go ahead and get into this one the um, back hook on this is a Gami B10S size one and i'm just going to get a thread base down here and then i'm going to go with some ice wing fiber for my tail i use this style a lot um and you'll see as i go through where i'm where i'm palmering multiple pieces of hackle or uh marabou and also having the UV polar in there. I just really like the way that that looks. There's a, there's probably, oh, uh, I'd say the October, the Southbound, and probably the AOC. I use that style a lot. And I just love the motion that you get out of this. Um, you'll see as we go further on, on this pattern but I just love the motion that you get out of this. You really can't beat Palmered Marabou or if you're using a brush uh, like I do on the October, whatever it may be. It just gives motion that you, you really can't replicate with much anything else. Uh, with this one, we're gonna throw some uh, Magnum Rabbit strips over the top so it's gonna even add more to the motion that we're getting out of this pattern. But these are just some MFC uh, barred olive and black marabou plumes and I'm gonna palmer three in total in this pattern on the back hook one here one in the front and then I'll use it as a skirt on the front hook but just getting started on this one I'll get this plume tied into place There we go. And I'm just going to throw a half hitch in here, get this bobbin in the cradle. And I'm going to grab on to my plume here. Make sure that my hand's out of the way. Make sure that your marabou's facing the right direction. And I'm just open looping this toward the front of the hook until I get close enough to the stem or to the tie-in point or what would be a better way to not the tie-in point but to where I essentially run out of a feather you know where I have my hackle pliers sitting in place there I'm just running that forward and then I'm going to bring this back just short of the point of my hook right there and you can see the little let me get that out of the way you can see how it has that little setup there it's, it's a nice little flapper tail but it's got some internal flash with that uh, minnow back I don't know if I explained that this is just a uh, ice wing fiber minnow back that I use for the tail right there and I have that setting right where I want it I could almost use a little bit of light back there I don't know it's uh, I think it may be all right for now I may be able to adjust it a little on the edit but uh, 
looks just a little bit dark. That should be all right. I'll refilm it if it's too awful bad. Messing around with some different angles and backgrounds here to try and get more detail, but we'll see what it looks like once I get it to the software. But we're just going to tie in some UV puller now, and I'm going to take this to the front of the hook. I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch because I'm going to palmer one more piece of marabou. And I also want to put my back on there as well. I'm going to have a uh, Magnum Rabbit strip. So we're just running this through here, getting those fibers untrapped as we go three to four wraps. Go ahead and anchor this in. And I've got a little bit of a twist right there. Three to four wraps once again. Anchor that in and I think I want one more. There we go. This is a uh, olive copper UV puller. If you want to, you can go with an olive brown or olive or whatever color you want. I like the way that this looks. This is one of the color combinations that I tie this one in. Um, I like this works with the olive brown and black MFC Marabou. I've been tying quite a few of these lately. There have been uh, a couple of folks fishing this with some good success here, been getting some good feedback as of late. Now I'm going to go with another palmered marabou section. Just get that into place. And just like before, we're going to palmer this, we're going to open loop it. We have a little bit well, we've got a lot less hook to work with, so the wraps are going to be a little bit more compact. But we're going to work this right to the eye of the hook, and then we're going to peel it back some. So once again, a few feathers that were trapped there. Once again, we're just running this right through. open loop up to the front. Let me get one more in there. That looks pretty good. And we'll go ahead and tie that off. Get out of there. Get out of there. There we go. You can see we've got a nice full section right there um, with our with our two plumes of marabou. There's some really nice internal flash through there that really makes that um, that underneath side, which you're going to see um, from this when when you're, when you're fishing this one, the, the hook point rides up. Okay, so it's going to be sitting like this. A lot of what you're going to be seeing, or what the fish is going to be seeing, actually, as you're jigging this through the water column, is this section right here. What we're going to do now is we're going to go to a black magnum rabbit strip. And if you want to do the two-toned, um, you know, black and um, olive or black and brown, whatever it may be, just to break this up a little bit, by all means, go ahead. Um, but I'm just going to go with a straight black on here. This is the way that I designed this one originally. So that's what we're going to go with. And I'm just going to take this, let me clear this out of the way here so we can see a little bit better. I'm going to take this and measure it out to where my hide is going to the materials. Let me get that. I'll turn this around here. So the hide is going to end 
right where my materials end. That would be my Palmered Marabou and my Flash. And I'm just gonna pull this back a little bit. If you want to go a little bit longer, you can always trim this up. Um, after the fact, you can always take a little bit off of that rabbit. But then I'm just gonna push that hide right through the center on that hook point. And then I'm just gonna pull this around and I'm gonna get this working up. I should have half hitched there. I should have half hitched. That's all right, we had plenty of wraps on top of that. Thought I did, but I must have forgot. Get out of there. So we're just gonna run a quick half hitch through there. Do that beforehand, it'll save you a little bit of aggravation. And then we're just working that hide right up to the top. I'm pulling my marabou back. And I'm gonna stop this right before the eye of the hook. So I'm gonna peel off any of this section right here. I'm gonna make a cut just on the hide. I don't wanna cut a ton of material. And then we're gonna work this in. Stretch that back just slightly. Get that out of the cradle. And I'm gonna make a few secure wraps just to get that rabbit hide into place, or just to get it secured. Yep. It's wanting to fight me a little bit. There we go. I'm sitting a little further back than I normally do, so I don't have the best view on this. But I'm hoping to get the camera angle right to where we get a little bit better of a view on that with a better background. So it may, I may fumble for a little bit until I get used to this process. But there we go. We'll go ahead and set that. And then I just want to grab a black marker here and I'm going to touch this up. I'm just going to touch up that thread with some black. Once I get my hand out of the way here, you'll be able to see this is going to be the top portion of our fly. We're going to have that black magnum rabbit strip running right down the back, nice and consistent. And then the length on this one is running just past the end of our palmered marabou. I like the length on that. I'm not going to trim anything. I'm going to keep it how it sits. And that's going to complete the back hook for this fly. Now I'm going to take some 19 strand beetle on and we're gonna set a gold or yellow bead, whatever color you want there. It doesn't matter the color on the bead, that's just the one that I picked out of the container, so that's what we're gonna use. And then we're gonna go with a one-aught Gami B10S. So that's sitting in the vise right there. Let me grab, well, I don't know if I like that angle too awful much. adjust that just slightly that may give a better look right there I think that will all right now I'm really off I'm tying in an angle and I'm sitting further back so if I mess up I have a good excuse we'll just set that in place get some thread wraps down there and then we're gonna grab our back hook now remember that this is riding upside down in the water. So your bottom's actually gonna wind up being the top of the fly. Just make sure that your orientation stays the same. I mean, it's pretty easy on when you're setting these two together because both of your hook points are riding down in the vise. But when we're fishing it, they're riding upside down. 
So now I'm just going to make a wrap around there really quick. I'm going to get this in my material clip there. Just make a couple of wraps forward. And I may have been a little short on that connection wire there. Just a little short, but we'll make it work. Sooner or later we'll make it work. There we go. So there we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a skirt section. And that's just simply another piece of marabou here. I'm going to find something that's got some decent thickness to it. But also it's going to have a lot of fiber or a lot of material that I'm able to work with. That one looks pretty good. Once again we're just going to set that in place get it tied in and then advance forward and half hitch. Nothing new here, we're just going to run this forward until we get to the point where we run out of feather and then we're going to tie it back over itself. Make sure that your feathers face in the right direction, package side to the front of the hook and bust it off. Why not? And I was running pretty smooth on this pattern here. I was like, man, this is going pretty good. We're going to make some good time. Nope. I may have to take this feather out. I may not have enough actually. We'll see what it looks like once I get it spun on there. It may be a little too sparse. Uh, That's too sparse, I can't let that fly. I can't let that fly, so we're just gonna back this out and start over. It was running smooth. Let's see if I can find another good feather here. That looks pretty good right there. That looks pretty good. Hopefully this one doesn't break on me. So we'll get that tied into place. Once again, half hitch. Just take that forward. I need to raise that up a little bit. There we go. We'll just take that forward. And then get a good spin on this. Try not to trap fibers as we go. Let me get one more wrap in there. That looks pretty good. Now we'll go ahead and tie that off. And we'll peel all of this stuff back. Taking this right in front, the right in front of the point of the hook once again, just the same as when we left off on the last one. And then you'll see we have that nice little skirt section right there. It's not as full of coverage as you typically see on some of these, like the ones where we'll just bust off some pieces of marabou. But it still has some pretty good coverage, especially once this gets wet and slicks down. Um, it, it covers your, your uh, connection up pretty well. We're going to go back to our UV puller for our body section on this one. Just get that tied into place. And I'm going to leave probably just over a quarter of an inch for the, for the uh, fish skull head for that sculpin helmet on this. I don't want a ton of material getting in there. 
even though it is a, a bigger helmet, it's a large, um, it will push, it, it will, um, if you have too much material in there, it'll be tough to get that helmet on and still have room in the front to, to fish your, or to get your mono through there. Um, that's probably about the point I want it right there. I'm just gonna test this out in a second. I'm gonna take this helmet here and I'm gonna throw this over the top. That looks pretty good. I still have, oh, it went for, went for a little flight there. You can see where my material's at and where the helmet is. I gotta keep my hand there because it'll fly off again because of thread. But it's sitting right where I want it. I'm still gonna have some room to finish this off. Still have the eye nice and clear. And still be able to get some material in there uh, to finish this fly off. So now, back to the Magnum rabbit here with your with your fibers going toward the back of the hook so as I put this in my hand here you can see that the fibers are going this direction that's how I want this to go I want to measure this out to where my hide is going just back into the back hook where I have this tied in so as that sits this is going to be a continuous coverage of rabbit on the top part of your fly and I'll, I'll show that a little bit better here once I get this in if this is where if you're gonna air on this one air on the long side with this strip right here because if you if it's too short you, you got to take it off and you got to put a new strip on there you can always cut a little section off if you need to but for this one here make sure that you air on the long side so what I'm going to do is just get a half hitch in there, get this in the cradle. Well, I don't need it in the cradle. That's a force of habit. And then I want to pick this hook out of the vise, work this around, get everything situated, get this back in the vise. And Thing was wanting to slide around on me a little bit there. Now I'm just going to pull that tight to where I have good tension on this back side, or I have good tension from where I have this connected in the back here. I'm just going to pull that tight. I'm going to make one capture wrap and then two securing wraps, and then I'm going to trim this hide off. It's probably just enough to do, well, that'll make some skirts or something for some butt monkeys or whatever it may be. So now, let me get this back out of the vise here and situate this thing a little bit better. Where are you at here? Where are you at? There we go. So now as I flip this around, you're gonna see this hide right here. And it's running a little far back into this. So what I wanna do is I'm just gonna take a razor blade here. I'm gonna lift this hide up. My feathers are coming, or the, the, the hair on this is going a little bit too far back. So I'm gonna take this razor blade on the underneath side and let me make sure that my fingers are as out of the way as possible there. Drop the scissors. Be able to see this a little better. And then I'm just gonna to touch this with my razor blade. That's gonna shorten this out. And now when this is sitting back here, that f those fibers are going just barely into the uh, back hook, but I still have a nice connection through there. There we go. Some of those fibers were wanting to kick off to the side. So 
so now I just want to take and get a couple good secure wraps through there, clean those thread wraps up slightly, and then we'll flip this around. And then the last thing that we're going to do before we put this helmet on is I'm going to get two feathers and I'm going to tie these in for pectoral fins. I want something that's a little bit webbier at the tips here. Like that one's a pretty decent one. Or if you have a feather that isn't the best, which typically these MFC ones, they're, they're picked through pretty well. Um, they're usually, they're usually pretty high quality feathers. So something like I was saying, it's just a little bit webbier and I may have to move in a little bit to get where I want on the, on the hook here. I may have to block something, but there I'm going to have this one running right down the side, just like a pectoral fin. set that right there trim off the excess and then the same thing on the opposite side this one's a little bit thicker so I'm going to use a little bit less of it to make sure that it's even set that on the side measure it out for length run that right down the side as well the feather wanted to roll on me a touch there and we'll get that secured into place. So now you can see this, you can see those two pectoral fins coming right down the side there. Um, it gives a nice little profile and it's gonna play nicely off of this um, sculpting helmet that we're gonna throw on here in a second. So now I just want a whip finish. You don't need a ton of wraps on there because we're gonna throw a lot of glue on this. So I want a whip finish. Now remember that this thing's gonna be riding upside down. So in order for it to be riding upside down, you need to make sure that your counterbalance or your counterweight on your helmet is sitting there properly. You can see all the weight on this one right there. Throw that in to where your eyes are facing the same direction as your or, or the eyes are on the same side as your rabbit strip so what's going to happen there is that's going to force this to ride hook point up because all your weights on the bottom right there you can see we have plenty of room to finish this off um, I'm going to take a little bit of glue here this is just some Loctite gel and I want to set that right back to the material. I don't want it on the material, but I want it going right back to it. And then I'm gonna set this helmet on there. And while that's setting, I just wanna make sure that I'm running the right direction. My head's back as far as I want it. Pick out these pectoral fins just a little bit. There we go, we've got a nice looking profile right there. And then after this thing dries, and I'm going to have, I know that helmet sitting where I want it. What I'm going to do later is just take a couple of wraps with, uh, let me see where I got it here. I'm just going to take a couple of wraps with some 140 uh, UTC, and I'm just going to go right in the front there. I'm going to finish that off with a dam of thread. It's going to be touching that helmet nice and then I'm going to touch it with just a little bit of zap and that's going to weld that thread, the hook, and the helmet to one another and it's not going to slide back and forth on you. There's enough material on this to where it catches it and then also with the glue it locks it into place really well but this just gives you a little bit of extra reassurance. On the ones that I fish and tie myself I don't do that last step, the commercial patterns I do. I don't want them flopping all around and you know. Um, some folks that you sell to aren't tires, so I mean they're not going to have the setup to to correct uh, something that I could control here uh, at the vice before we sell them. So that is the completed 
Let me get some stuff out of here so we can give this a spin. But that is the completed southbound sculpin. There you can see the fly that we have right there. I'll take this out of the vise and give it a full look in my hand here. But there is the completed southbound sculpin. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments on this one, uh, leave them with me as always and I'll get back to you. But thanks for watching and we'll catch you next Wednesday.